Okay, here we are back with part four of single phase motors. All right, so uh, we've finished looking at the different types of single phase motors. Uh, essentially, essentially, let's, let's go right back to the start uh, that I said that basically the difference between those different types is how we start them. That's when we talk about different types of single phase motors, we're talking about different types of uh, different methods of starting a single phase motor. So that's our biggest challenge there. Uh, so the final things we're going to look at, selecting a single phase motor. In the previous sections we looked at the characteristics of various motors to help you select a motor for a particular task. Often though, further information is needed to select the correct motor. These include the rating in horsepower or in watts, multi-speed requirements, electromagnetic interference, and motor enclosure. So let's have a look at those. On the nameplate of some early electric motors, the output power is expressed in horsepower. We talked about that in one of the previous topics. The horsepower is the original unit of power defined by James Watt as being 550 foot-pounds per second, or 33,000 foot-pounds per minute, as the average, average power output of a dray horse, and was based on English units for distance, the foot, and force, the pound. The internationally accepted unit of power is the watt, which in mechanical terms is defined as one newton meter per second, and in electric terms is one volt amp time, or one volt times one amp. Hence the output power of a motor is expressed in watts or kilowatts of mechanical power, and its input is watts or kilowatts of electrical power. We're replacing an old power, an old motor having a horsepower rating, you need to be able to work out the equivalent rating in watts or kilowatts. So the following, one foot equals 0 0.3048 meters, about 30 centimeters. One pound is about 4.4482, let's say four and a half newtons. That's a measure, a pound in terms of force, a pound, uh, not, not a pound of weight, a pound of force. So one horsepower is 550 foot pounds per second, or 745.7. 746 watts, so 550 times 4.4482 times 0 0.3048 per second. So it's just that, that's um, using all those constituent parts of a horsepower to work out what that would be in watts. Hence, the conversion factor is one horsepower to 746 watts. To replace a 10 horsepower electric motor, for example, the new motor will have to have a rating of 10 times 746, 7,460 7, watts. The nearest standard rated motor is 7.5 kilowatts, so the 7,500 watts. Therefore, an adequate replacement for a 10 horsepower motor is a 7.5 kilowatt motor. And I said that the last time we talked about horsepower, didn't I? That um, we we kind of, I, you know, you, quick way of doing horsepower to kilowatt conversion is about three quarters. So. Uh, 10 horsepower, three quarters of that, 7.5 kilowatts, there we go. Multi-speed motors. With the exception of the universal motor, single phase motors are generally single speed machines. Special designs, however, do allow for more than one running speed, with the most common types having two speeds. Note, it is important to understand that in motor applications, there's a difference between multi-speed and variable speed. A multi-speed motor is one which by its design can operate at more than one set speed, for example, full speed, half speed. A variable speed motor is one that has a controller to provide almost infinite and stepless speed possibilities up to full speed. An example is the sewing machine speed controller motor that we talked about earlier. So that gives us essentially infinite variability. But a multi-speed motor is one that has set points. And here we have, uh, we, we talked about this earlier, uh, tapped field universal motor, a lower speed occurs when all of the winding is used, medium speed when part of the winding is out of the circuit, so that would be the middle, the middle one there, so current flowing from our phase up there through part of the winding, and then high speed when the uh, winding is removed, so the field flux is its weakest. Two speed split, split phase motors. To change the speed, the number of poles is changed. One way of achieving this is to provide three windings, one start and two run windings. These motors are, for example, wound for six and eight poles, so run at approximately 960 and 720 revolutions per minute. 
They are commonly used to drive electric fans where two speeds are necessary. So we just switch in and out different run windings, basically, uh, and change the number of poles. We talked about that in the uh, video we did about generation. We talked about um, the number of poles and the speed of the generator is based on the number of poles and the frequency, or rather the frequency is based on the number of poles and the speed at which I turn my generator. And a motor uses exactly the same formula. Surprise, surprise. The frequency that I put in there, combined with the number of poles, will tell me what the speed of the motor is going to be. So if I change the number of poles, I can change the number of, uh, I can change the speed that it runs at. Uh, electromagnetic interference from motors. EMI is the propagation of unwanted signals of electrical energy at any frequency. We know that, we know about EMI. Electric motors must be designed so as not to introduce intolerable EMI to other equipment or systems where the quality of the supply is important. For example, computer installations. Uh, EMI can be propagated by natural occurrences such as lighting and electrostatic discharges, which are beyond our control. However, EMI can also be caused by electric motors in which rapid switching occurs. For example, sparking at the brushes and commutator of the universal motor can create continuous EMI. The same effect can occur during the starting and stopping of some split phase motors when the centripetal switch opens or closes. This is a very brief occurrence and not usually a problem. The universal motor, however, usually requires the connection of some suppression devices to reduce EMI to an acceptable level. Because, that, because the brush and commutator is acting as a switch, it's switching the polarity of uh, the incoming supply, the incoming AC supply. So it's basically switching it um, 50 times a second. No matter whether the motor is a DC type or an AC single phase or three phase, an important consideration is the type of casing or enclosure necessary to protect the motor against its working environment. Various types of enclosure have been designed to suit particular working conditions. Some common ones are screen protected, drip proof, totally enclosed and flame proof. Drip proof and screen protected. The openings are positioned to protect against drops of water and screens to protect the vent. So we would have no openings facing upwards to prevent uh, anything dripping down into our motor. Totally enclosed fan ventilated has no external vents. Okay, so there's no no way that anything could get inside. A flame proof motor, totally enclosed and strong enough to contain any explosion that occurs in the motor. Interesting thing about flame proof motors that um, I learned working in the fuel industry is that, uh, like I've said to you guys before, that you know if you get a faulty capacitor, the motor won't start. Um, if you turn it, it'll, it'll run, and, and that has, uh, on occasion, allowed me to uh, purchase goods at reduced prices that people thought were broken, but just needed a new capacitor. I've come across motors uh, in the fuel industry that are the same, they just uh, need a new capacitor, but you can't replace them, because once you've opened it up to get that capacitor out, you have now uh, violated the integrity of that flame-proof enclosure. It's not designed to be open, and uh, and you cannot do anything with it. Now, I could pull it open and replace the capacitor in there, but then I can't put it back into a fuel pump because it no longer counts as flame-proof, which means every time you blow a capacitor on one of these bad boys, you're going to replace the whole motor, which uh, the last time I bought one of those, it would have been a, uh, I think the standard fuel pump uses maybe a one-half kilowatt, Oh, no, it would be a lot less than that, maybe three quarters of a kilowatt, something like that. And uh, and those were about 1700 bucks a pop. That's where your money goes when you buy fuel. These things are not expen are not cheap. Fuel pumps are not cheap to fix. And you've got to hire people like me, top dollar, to fix them for you. That's it. That is the last slide. Uh, boy, that was... Uh, couple of hours worth of videos I think Whew, big one although this last video is pretty short uh, final final um, final digit of your code access code for this one is a one the final digit of the access code is a one all right that's it for me for now I will uh, thank you for your time and we will see you at the next one as ever 
let me know if you need help with anything. Here to help. Cheers, team.